Let me share my screen. I think it should work. Here it is. Okay. Can you see my screen? Perfect. Okay, perfect. So yeah. So today I'll mainly talk about how I trained the Rosetta board too and how it's different from the Alpha board and what I adopted from Alpha board paper, what I differ from the Alpha board and and give you some take home messages. So, so today's conclusion is you don't need to follow alpha board. I mean, everything in the alpha board, but if, if you can just keep track of the, the idea, then you can also explore different architectures which can do the similar things, but in more efficient way. So yeah, let's get into it. So today's topic is mainly uh, about the, how I developed the Rosetta board too, starting from the Rosetta board. So inspired by success of Alpha 42 in CAS 14, I developed this Rosetta board based on their ideas presented in their I mean, pre predictors talk in CAS 14 conference. So at that time, I made a three-track attention-based network, which first processed process MSA features through the attentions while keep communicating it uh, to the 2D track, which basically try to add more details to the interactions between residues, which actually consist, I mean, uh, compose the, pro, pro, the, the carry, pre, carry protein. So when it has some reasonable, uh, the, the, the residue pairwise distance predictions, like after eight blocks of the two-track interactions, I mean, two-track communications, it started to build the 3D structures. And now this 3D structure actually gives some feedback to update the, 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 the understand the MSA features and update the pair and structure features. So by doing this three track communication, the Rosetta port actually can get a reasonable structures even uh, without recycling or just less number of iterations. So that was the idea of the Rosetta port. And when we make this one, and we actually found that this Rosetta board can use to predict the complex structures with some, some the residue gap trick, and also Alpha 42 also can do the same thing. So we decided to apply this for the PPI screening in proteomic scale. So after a few months, we reported this result on science. So we basically did uh, the PPI screening for East Intractome and we identified uh, quite a many new interactions which are not detected before using the experimental screening. So the Rosetta Ford and Alpha Ford actually uh, opened a new era in, in the computational biology. And now we can predict pretty accurate structures at, and also we can do some PPI screening also get a reasonable complex structures but there's still a lot of room for improvement. So in terms of the monomeric structure prediction, the Rosetta port is still worse than Alpha 2 at that time. So we just wanted to improve the Rosetta port's ability to predict the monomeric structures, as well as at the same time, we also wanted to improve the Rosetta port for PPI screening and complex structure modeling. So to make the improvement, we try to uh, I'll say we try to adopt some lessons from the Alpha Ford. So when so from the Alpha Ford paper, uh, we got several lessons from there. So first of all, they used the PEP loss instead of RMSD as a structure loss, and this actually doesn't have any kind of middle structure issues. So it gives them so it's basically much better choice for the structure loss. Uh, to, to get a, a correct structure at the end. And based on their ovulation study, and, and when we just compare it to our Rosetta board, we found these three points is additional. It, these three uh, things are also very important uh, for the Alpha board's achievement. So in Alpha board, they use not only PDB data, but also the, some model structure using their Alpha, uh, the Alpha board method as a self-distillation training. 
So having the extended training data with predictive structures actually improves the border performance quite a lot. And this one, we never tried this one. So we, we decided to have some extended training data to improve the erosion of wood. And the other thing, uh, the pretty interesting one is this recycling idea. So in our Lugera board paper, we also tried to do something like recycling in inference mode, but we never tried to train the model with explicit recycling. So it seems that this recycling actually helps a lot to get a good model quality at the end. So we decided to add this recycling. Mm. Is someone asking something? Oh. Okay. Yeah, so we decided to add this recycling uh, to improve the Rogera Ford. And also the final thing is using the triangles to update pair features. So when they update the, the pair to pair update, when they perform these pair to pair updates, they actually consider the triangular uh, relationship, not just, just related to pair, pair wide interactions. So so they tr basically try to introduce proper biases for 2D feature update because this 2D feature is not simple images. It actually present some geometric information uh, so, that, so that it can encode the distances and orientations even better. But this triangle actually computational, in terms of computational cost is, cost is very expensive. It's proportion to R cubic. So, so this one, when I read the Alphabet paper, I really impressed about this triangle idea, but I somehow think about, maybe thought about maybe I can reduce this computational cost in more efficient way. So my initial attempt is just making a hybrid of Rojana Ford and Alpha Ford. So keep trying to have the identity of this three track idea as a Rojana Ford, uh, but try to have some additional component adopted from the alpha fold. So basically I replaced the RMSD with the fake plus to, to evaluate the, 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 the generated structures. And I also added this recycling idea and, and I replaced this attention, just simple actual attentions with triangle multiplicative, multiplicative updates and triangle attentions in alpha fold two. And I also trained this model on not only PDB, but also the predictive structure using AlphaFold. And these predictive models are actually provided by Meta AI group. Uh, yeah, so it's shout out to them. So by combining those four components to the Rosetta Ford, when I trained this model, it actually improved the performance quite a lot. So just adding pay flows actually improves a lot of, improved pretty a lot like GDTTS improvement, improvement like two points. And this is mainly due to it removes all the mirrored image issue. And when I added the recycling and triangle attentions and also the triangle update and also this distillation data set, it improves another 2.5 points so that it's much better than the Rosetta fold. But it's still a lot of room to improvement and I tried to see what's the problem there. So when I benchmark this Rosetta Ford 1.1 or 1.2 version on the CAS 14 target, I found several issues, especially for large proteins. So when I train this model, if I run a predictions for small or intermediate size of protein, the prediction is really good. So the green here is a native and the, the the cyan, the sky blue is the predicted one from the Rosetta Ford. But if it's getting larger, like over 700, somehow it breaks the, the structures. So at that time, we didn't do any kind of fine tuning with larger crops. It's just basic initial training round without any kind of bone geometry rows or, or, and also with very small crop size. So, so just fine tuning these with larger crop might help. But after the fine tuning with larger crop, as well as the bondage geometry rows, it still looks really weird. So overall, the trace looks okay, but it's still, uh, it's still hard to make a good, I mean, geometries or protein-like structures because it has all the broken bondage, broken bond. So to, the, to solve this problem, 
uh, we decided to add some additional refinement layers inspired by having the shared parameter layers, the IPA layers at the end in Alpha 4 2. But instead of IPA, because we already have the, 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 the given 3D structures from the, the third track, we decided to having some refinement layers based on SE3 transformer, but having the shared parameters. So we just applied SE3 transformer four times here to define the structure starting from the somewhat having somewhat okay trace, but still has some problem in bone geometries. And by doing this refinement and, and also training on training with these refinement layers, the, the it actually resolves the issues for that, that, that the for the large protein. So in this case, without the refinement layers, it actually the trace looks okay, but the all the bone geometry are broken. But with after the training with refinement module, now it can build the perfect structure which have TM score over 90. And in, in addition to these refinement layers, we also added a few more things. So to uh, consider more sequences during the prediction, we also adopted uh, this extra MSA block idea from the alpha fold. So basically we make this the two track block working on the with the, the, the extra sequences that include that included in the DC the MSA to, to get an additional pair feature update uh, and that uh how say uh that losing some additional information from the, the sequences not selected as a seed MSA. So we are so we so introduce this extra MSA block to make a to consider the larger number of sequences uh, for the prediction. And we also make it deeper architecture with somewhat shallower number of features. I mean, the narrower number of features. So previously, we the, the Rujera Ford have eight two track blocks and four three track block, but we actually uh, make it pretty large. I mean, pretty deeper. So now we extend it to 36 two track block and a three track block. But because we reduce the number of features for each block, the overall number of parameter is pretty same to the original Rojera fold. So adding the refinement layers, considering more sequences using this extra MSA block trick in the alpha fold two paper and making it deeper, but narrower. Uh, those are also contributed to improve the performance of this Rudra fold. So having, having the refinement layer actually improves a little bit, especially for the, the larger protein. And considering more sequences improves uh, performance pretty a lot. Oh, sorry. The increasing the number of the layers actually uh, improves the performance pretty a lot. And also considering more sequences also yeah, the contributed to improve the, uh, the modeling performance. So it's much closer to the alpha fold two, but at this time, I feel like I, the Rudera fold should be faster and more memory efficient because we wanna do the complex modeling and also the large scale PPI screening with this Rudera fold, uh, not only just tertiary structure modeling. So for the PPI screening, the, the entire complex you can uh, over 1,000 residues. So the, the, at that time, it's pretty slow to compute those kind of interactions. So I decided to make it faster by removing some triangles uh, used in the upper fold too. So as I mentioned, the triangle-based pair update, the triangle update and triangle attentions requires the, the L cubic proportion, the time and memory proportion to L cubic. So this is too slow and too heavy. So if I just calculate the triangle attention map, uh, the, the memory usage for the triangle attention map, if the, that has just four attention at, and if the input is like 1500 amino acid complexes, then, then it will require 25 gigabyte, even with the half precision, if you don't use any kind of 
uh, the, the memory reduction trick. So yeah, at that time I tried to think about the better way to introduce proper inductive bias to pair update. So this inductive bias shows something like to consider the structural relationship between the residues. And also it, at the same time, I feel like the current two track followed by three track architecture is somewhat inefficient because it basically throw away all the good information from the template and this and also the previous the predictive structures from the pre previous cycles. So basically, if for the easy TBMs or or the in the recycling case, even though we have pretty good structures at the beginning, just the current I mean this two track the two track plus three track this architecture actually throw away the, this good starting point and try to rebuild everything from the scratch. So I feel like it's somewhat inefficient, even though those information propagate through this pair picture, but, but it will actually need to do uh, build the 3D structures in the, mid, in the middle. So, so it's, I feel like it's somewhat inefficient to just throw away all the good information in the 3D structure. So, it, so by combining these two ideas, I feel like I don't need to track part anymore and I can make it pure three track only architecture. So I decided to initialize the XYZ coordinate based on the template or structures from the previous, the forward path. So if there's no template found, just use black hole initialization as alpha four did. And if I found some template or if in the training time, if template provided, it uses the template to initialize the coordinate. But for the unaligned regions in the template, uh, the, the coordinate will be initialized to the closest aligned residues. And also I decided to not use triangles for pair picture update to reduce the time and memory cost. So triangles actually introduced to, to provide proper inductive bias so that network know pair picture should encode the geometric stop. So I, think, I just curious what if we introduce some bias from given 3D structure, because in three track architecture, we already have the current 3D, 3D structures. And from there, we can understand the relationships between the residues. So I decided to use some kind of bias attention and to, so, so basically I just applied the actual, actual tied attention with biases from the 3D structure. So I introduced this tied idea because the attention map should include some residue geometric stop, and that one should be same for every residue uh, in the, the, the 2D pair features. So, so I introduced the tied attention for the row, the row and column-wise tied attention with the biases from the structures. So this shows the by attention, I mean network attention map calculation uh, equations. And in this scheme, it requires just the, the memory and time, the computation and time, just proportion to the R cube, R, R square, not R cubic. And this can reduce the, 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 the memory cost uh, from the 25 gigabyte to 70 megabyte. If you have just four attention hats for the pair feature update, for the 1500 amino acid proteins. So, so based on this idea, we implemented the new three track only architecture. So this now this extra MSA block also has this three track, but having simplified the, 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 the attentions for the, the column wide attentions for, to process this for MSA to reduce the memory cost for the the, the, the larger, I mean, deeper MSAs. So we trained this model for extra MSA blocks, 36 main three track blocks. And also we also trained it with the, the refinement layers. And we also do a recycling as well with, so, and also use the extended data set. So this three track early architecture actually performs better than the, the, the 
the mixture of two track and three track architecture with the triangle update and triangle attention. So this pink color here now the much better than the previous best model and it's much closer to the alpha fold too. So at that time we decided to add the side chain. So, so far it was back on only model and, 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 and now I think at the time we thought to improve starting from here to there, maybe we need some sidechain information. So we decided to add some sidechain modeling to the Rosetta 4 too. So to do that, uh, it, because we don't have any single sequence features used in the IPA in Alpha 4 2, and instead we have some state feature, which is basically L0 feature output from the SC3 transformer, uh, which actually uh, some kind of just node features for the, 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 the graph, the protein structure graph. So we just combine the, 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 the sequence features from the MSA and also the state feature from the, the SA3 transformer and we concatenate them and use it to predict chi angles and some original angles for C beta and C gamma placement so that we can consider some rare bond angle changes in the, the, the amino axis, I mean, in the, the residual confirmation prediction. So this is, after some training, uh, we actually tested how it performs on sidechain modeling. So at that time, it's pretty, it's actually worse than alpha 4 2. So this is some cases what alpha 4 success, but Rosetta 4 failed. So at that time, it's fair to pack the, the tryptophan on top of glycine. So it's somewhat lifted up. So it's fair to tightly pack the tryptophan to glycine. And also it's also fair to pack this tyrosine into inside. And instead of just packing it inside, it's just going to the opposite direction and then just leave it there. So it seems like the Rosetta board have some problems to pack the side chains and, and making more contact between the side chains. So, so at that time, the, the Frank DiMaio, the, the, my closest collaborator, come up with ideas, maybe you can include some Renner Jones or Van der Bar's losses, uh, then the side chain packing probably getting much better. So we decided to ask some Physics to Rosetta for training. So not only just use the bondage geometry or clash terms as a loss, we actually implement the Rosetta for Van der Waals energy terms as a loss. So when I when we just uh, implement just heavy atom Van der Waals is uh, in terms of the or atom identity, which also includes the side chain confirmation, it improves a little bit. But when we actually in, uh, encode or or hydrogens and near or atoms to calculate the Van der Waals energies more correctly, it improves pretty a lot, the side chain quality. And also it improves a little bit of the backbone quality as well. And after this, the training with Van der Waals, the energy terms, the side chain packing becomes much better. So when we just use the clash term, the, the as, you, as I already showed, it's fair to pack the side chains tightly but with this Van der Waals loss term, now the glycine tryptophan interaction is much better. And also this tyrosine packed inside to make a good interactions between the, the others surrounding the residues. So, so, so far we used the three track architecture and trained fine and, and, and used the Van der Waals loss term instead of just clash loss to, to, to encode I'd say to make the, the final structures followed, really followed some physical principles by directly training it on training it on some energy function. And one of the core of our, I mean the Rosetta for two uh, development is basically used it to predict not only tertiary structures, but also <clears throat> complex structures and the, the PPI screening. So we decided to add the, the bio unit data. So the heterocomplexes complexes or homo-oligomer complexes, uh, and also as well as some negative PPI cases. So that the Rosetta for 
directly uh, trained on the complex structure prediction as well as the PPI screening. So, so we uh, make the training set consists of like 50% from the, 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 the predicted structures using alpha fold and 25% from the PDB examples, single chains or homo oligomers, and the other half from the heterocomplexes and the rest from the negative PPI cases. So we, for the negative PPI cases, we actually randomly generated this by just checking whether the random regenerated pairs are actually having some homologous sequences that can make a direct contact. So we just exclude them. So basically, because it have very little chance to interact to, uh, to each other for any just two random proteins, we just expect the random pairs will be non-interacting pairs. So it should be, it could be a little bit noisy. And for the cropping, so for the single chains or negatives, we just use the continuous crops. But for the complexes, we just use the special crops, so basically crop around the interfaces. So by including this, the complex data and the, the negative uh, PPI data, when we train this model, train the Rosetta board on this data set, it actually performs better for the complex modeling. So here, the, the, we benchmark some of the latest uh, heterocomplex, uh, heterodimer prediction tasks. So alpha fold 2 multimer is much better than alpha fold 2. And this RF2DIP is the, the one trained without the complex data. So this one is only trained on monomeric PDB with some self distillation set from the alpha fold predictive structure. And the RF2 bio unit is the one trained on not only PDB, I mean, not only alpha fold 2 predictive structures, but also the monomeric PDBs, complex PDB, and some negative PPI cases. So this one is definitely better than the Rosetta Ford trained only on the monomeric structures for the complex structure modeling. And if and this shows the how it performs when two proteins are came from the same species or the different species. So, so definitely, I mean, it's a little bit hard to see any kind of trend, uh, the, whether it prefer the 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 protein protein pairs from same species or not. But if you see here, there's a clear tendency to the length of the protein. So in this case, RF2 bio unit is uh, performs much worse when the protein is getting larger, the darker color here. So it's pretty, uh, uh, pretty weird to me. So I decided to see what happened there. So if, when I tested it on a, a lot of large complexes or large proteins, I found several interesting cases. So this is uh, some homo oligomer modeling result using the Rosetta pool trained on the complex data. So for the small homo oligomers, it predicts pretty good structure. So it captured the C2 symmetry correctly as shown in native, and it also captured the interface correctly. But for the large homo oligomers like homo trimer here, the prediction is really, I mean, it looks really bad. So, and also if we have very large heterodimers or very, or very large heterotrimers, it also predict, it also fair to predict correct interfaces for those cases. So it's pretty weird to me. And, and at that time, we actually used the top K connected graph for the SE3 transformer. So we basically connect up to 128 residues close to the the, the, the target residue, but, but if we don't have any good structures, I just make it to connect the closest 128 residues in the sequence. So for the large complexes, there's no chance and terminal of the, the M terminus residues of the first chain, there's no chance the N terminal state of the first chain, first chain can see the C terminus residue of the second chain if it doesn't have good starting structure. So it's really hard to propagate the information from the C terminus to N terminus. So I decided to make it just fully connected graph for the main 3D part, main D3 track part. 
but keep having top cake graph for the refinement voter to make it efficient and, and, and to reduce the time and memory cost to compute. So by changes this SD transformer, the graph setup for this SD transformer from top K to fully connected graph, I can make it much better. So with the top K graph, it performs pretty, I mean, badly, but with by changing this to fully connected graph, now it performs pretty well. Uh, and, and already the, the, the hardest case is having the, the large, large, the complex side, they become much better compared to the previous version. So, so we actually, so this one is what we participated in CAS 15. But in CAS 15, there's a tons of, I mean, target having ledgers over like 1500 or even 3000. And we found a lot of issues for this huge protein target. So this is a, one of the examples, <clears throat> T1125, which have 1200 amino acid, but having just very shallow MSA, like 90 sequences in the MSA. And at the time, up for two, Anyway, it gives some reasonable, I mean, protein-like structures, but Rosetta 42 is more like spaghetti-like structure in the middle. And, and we saw a lot of these kind of cases for the large, especially very huge proteins over 1,000 amino acids or 2,000 amino acids. And, and, and we try to find an issue with that. So there are quite many I mean, several issues, including the SC, the MSC3 transformers and, and, and the other part, but the main part is the this one. So when we actually try to add some triangle update, because triangle update seems like much uh, faster than, than triangle attention and simpler to calculate. So so we decided not just using the structure bias axial attention, but keep having the triangle update before the this up to apply before applying this structure biased axial attention. So without any kind of triangle update for this huge, I mean, task 15 target, Rosetta 4 to the knife Rosetta 4 pair to predict a good structure. But when we add this triangle update, now it performs much better. And, and it's pretty similar to alpha 4 to prediction. So, so when you benchmark these additional contributions uh, in terms of the modeling performance, so when we just exchange the triangles with structure-based by, by, by actual attention, uh, it, it was, I mean, close to alpha 4 to, but not there. But when we change the fully connected on CAS 14 target, which it has somewhat smaller target. It shows the similar performance to alpha 4 2 and having triangle multiplication update is improved a little bit, but there's no big differences, but it makes a huge difference in CAS 15 target because CAS 15 have more, I mean, more target having the, the, the longer, uh, the more having more amino acid. And this is our training details for the initial training round and fine tuning round for this final model. So it has, so for the initial training, we used a smaller crop size and, and, and basic loss function without any kind of bone geometry, van der Waals, or yeah, bone geometry or van der Waals. And also the running rate is pretty high with linear warm up step. And, and we also do more training for the initial round. And for the fine tuning stage, we, uh, we make it, the, we use the larger crop size and we added the bone geometry rows and van der Waals rows to make it the more uh, uh, reasonable structures in terms of the physical principles. And we also gotta make the learning rate to half so that it can start, I mean, that away, that going away from the, the initial round of training. So entire training is performed 
on this so PXT4B100 GPUs and it takes okay. like three to four weeks. And this final model, when we compare this accuracy and computation speed to the upper 42, and we actually made the testes, this test on recently released PDBs and some Camel target. So for the tertiary structure modeling, the Roger 42 now is performed similar to the upper 42. And in terms of complex modeling, for the heterodimers, especially the Roger 42 is performed pretty similar to upper 42 Mortimer. But but in terms of the computing time, it's much faster than upper for two because we don't use the triangle attention. Oh, and, and so basically by replacing the triangle attentions with some biased actual attentions from biases from the structures, it makes uh, much it makes the, the Roger upper two much efficient, even though it has a similar accuracy level to the upper board. So now we are actually trying to follow extensions of Rosetta 42. So I don't want to go details for those methods uh, because yeah, it's pretty late in Korea and I don't want to make it longer than an hour. So, so I think Frank, I mean, Frank, Frank DeMai already gave, gave a talk, nice talk in CASIC RNA meeting. And I, and I found that it on YouTube. So if you missed it, please find, please, I mean, go to the Catholic RNA YouTube channel and you can, you can heard, of, heard his great talk on Roger for DNA. And also because, also we uh, further extend this Roger forward to design a new protein by, by uh, changing the training setup to the diffusion model training setup. And this is the doable, I mean, easily passed, uh, this transformation is really easy because Rosetta Ford already have this three track architecture, which is very suitable to change it for the diffusion model setup. So it already have the input sequence and some pairwise initial pair features and initial XYZ coordinate as the input to make a pretty clear structure using the Rosetta Ford. It's really easy to change it for this diffusion model setup. So using the math input sequence, some pair features, especially in this Rosetta for diffusion setup is the self-conditioning and also the XYZ coordinate from the diffuse coordinate. So, so this three track architecture is not only make the network efficient, but also it makes the network more applicable or, or more, more uh, transformable for the other task, especially for protein design. So I'd like to thanks to Frank DiMaio so this work is the largely done by collaboration with him and also Ivan for the, all the data sources and also Yusta, Sergey, Ju for the helpful discussions. And for the complex data and PPI screening idea, Ian and Chen helped me a lot. And also I'd like to thanks to David. And also I'd like to thanks to my student in my new group at the Seoul National University. And, and yeah, happy to take any question. Thanks a lot. It was really, really interesting. Like a lot of, lot of things to learn. So, uh, may I raise a hand if you have questions. And in the meantime, before you do, I can start. Like, uh, so um, your the the version that you used in Cast fifteen had these overlap mm -hmm. things. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it seems a bit like uh, if you remember, Apple for Multimer two point one also had the same problem, but that's. But just so I didn't really understand how you solved it. You saw this triangular multimer. Can you explain a bit more what you, what you actually did to solve it? Because it was because they, they solved it by just adding a penalty term for for van der Waals terms, I think. But you, so I, I didn't really get this triangular updates you did there. You mean this part, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So what it actually first tried is just cropping idea. So basically doing some. Uh, in front multiple times on different crops and try to combine them to build a final structure. But that one is very time consuming and and it actually make it hard the for the complex structure prediction. So so we try to uh, we are think about what will be the main factors to to 
to make Rudra food not perform well on these large, I mean, really huge proteins. And at the time we found that the pair features for this very huge protein somewhat uh, actually looks like very, I'll say, it's too blurry to make a good structure. Okay. And it's really hard to make it sharp just using this structure biased, I mean, structure based, the structure biased actual attention. So, so at that time, I thought this structure biased actual attention basically update features by combining the, the contributions from the other residues. But I feel like this triangle update, it's more directly compute the, how will say, uh, I would say directly consider the or the contributions from the different residues. So I just decided to add this one and see what happened there. So in upper board paper, also they mentioned just use of one of them, the triangle update, either triangle update or triangle attention performed pretty well, but using both is the better. So I just decided to use the simpler one, the triangle update, and see whether if I combine it with the structure, I mean, bias actual attention idea, whether it helps to make a better structure. So, so it's more like just finding it practically. <laughs> and, okay. and yeah, I'm not sure whether there's a strong mathematical region or so many other physical regions having this triangle update makes things much better. Okay. Okay. And, but and if I, guess, I remove so it, this, it, it, it took, and it took three yeah, weeks I, to retrain every time. Yeah. Yeah. If so, I remove this structure bias X orientation, so if I just use the triangle update, it's basically perform worse than having this one. Okay. So, so having so both then, of them is the best way to make a okay. prediction. Okay. At the end. Uh, Julie has a question. Oh yeah. So yeah, this is a Julie. Uh, thank you very much for this very nice uh, talk. And it's a great work. Eventually, the open source uh, project that can mm -hmm. finally outperform our fold. Yeah, so I really appreciate it. So uh, I know it's very, uh, very late in Korea. So I'll probably just ask very uh, mm -hmm. two very quick questions. So mm -hmm. I hope we could discuss in the future. Yeah. So uh, the first question is, I'm, I'm just curious about the training uh, detail. So mm -hmm. I, I remember just mentioned that for your final, you're training for like for five or six weeks. So how many GPU cards did you, did you use? And my second question is that, uh, so uh, we, we have already seen a great breakthrough in the protein field. So you have uh, seen the, those uh, great tools to predict the protein structure. We mm -hmm. also see some uh, as proposed for the protein design. So I'm just curious, in, in your opinion, what's the next big thing in the, in the protein field? Mm -hmm. So for the training details, so I use 64 V100 GPUs and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it takes like four to five weeks to train to get a final model. But okay. I'm not a software engineer, so I'm pretty sure there's a lot of room to engineer my code to make it faster. <laughs> okay. But we don't have any okay. software okay. engineer, so, so it's what we use at that time. So okay. it's pretty right. slow, but but I'm pretty sure someone can make it better if someone really want to do that. <laughs> and, okay. and I think the next biggest thing, I mean, is definitely predicting interactions between proteins and other molecules. I mean, now oh, we probably just, RNA. yeah, probably RNA or DNA nucleic acid, I'm working on it. <laughs> and I know you are also working <laughs> on that. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, thanks to the alpha Ford, I think the solving the protein structure is way more, I mean, it's become, I think become easier. And, and now people are trying to solve a lot of structures with different ligands or different environment setup or, or so, so I think we are going to have more and more uh, new interaction data not or mm. also in structure, I mean, also in the structure data and also uh, some additional experimental data as well. So, so I think the next thing probably 
working on the prediction of the interactions of the proteins. Okay, okay, and, great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look forward to And that's what I'm working on it right now, Edward. Okay, okay, great. I mean, look forward to seeing you probably in November in Korea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Okay, David, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, so Hello, yes, excellent talk. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Um, I, I guess one kind of thing, I'll turn my hand off, I guess, but uh, um, not for real, but um, I guess one of the things that I've noticed, I guess, and it's, it is a, I'll now put something else on, turn that off. Okay. Lower my hand, there we go. And uh, I'm clapping anyway, so I'll, I'll leave that running for a sec. <laughs> but I, I guess the data set you're training on is not the same as the one that AlphaFold was trained on. I guess this is the problem. I guess it's. I guess when we're looking at these, do you have any insight into how you know if you did the the very nice sort of deltas you've done in terms of architecture search? Do you know mm -hmm. what the delta would be on? I, I guess it's difficult to know if you haven't done it. But if you went back in time to the data set that AlphaFold was trained on, how much mm -hmm. of a difference that would make to the uh, to the performance? Oh, you mean the training data set, the data cutoff, data cutoff for the training data set, right? And, and also the the distillation data you use is different, I think. Oh yeah, that's also different. So it's really hard to answer that question because no one knows the exact answer. And I think having just a few, I mean, so we use the date cutoff at 2020 April, so right before CAS 14 start. And I think after for two at the time uses the 2018, right before CAS 13 start. So, so it's like two years, I mean, two year gap between them. And, but when we see the, the result from the, the, the in CAS 15, the alpha for, new alpha forward predictions with trained on original training set, actually there's no big difference between CAS 14 versions of the alpha forward two and newly trained alpha forward version 2.3. So I think there's no big difference in terms of the training examples, it already, already contains a lot of different protein families. And also for the, the extended training set, the self distillation set, it also includes a lot of unit of 50 structures. So, so I think their diversity is pretty same to each other. And, and I don't think there's no big difference. Uh, there's no big contributions to, to, to the, 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 the final model performance. Thanks. I, I kind of follow, I'll follow it up with a more general question in that, in that case, mm -hmm. I guess, to say um, it's interesting that, you know, you have followed a different trajectory to, to reach mm -hmm. the same kind of optimum that AlphaFold mm -hmm. 2 has done. And, and I guess others have done similarly. But one slight concern I always have in the back of my mind, does this mean that we've kind of reached a global optimum for this solution or this type of solution to the problem? I mean, is it that we've tried, people have tried different architectures, whether you use 3D tracks or or, or the triangle tracks mm -hmm. and with a lot of pushing you, you know you've very very nicely got to a same kind of point roughly yeah but yeah feel that that is just show, a bit like the second structure prediction i guess in before when we kind of we hit a certain optimum and it was impossible mm -hmm. really to do any better than that using even yeah. the latest architectures do you think that might be the same thing going on here uh I think so. So basically the Rogera Ford and Alpha, the basic idea of the Rogera Ford and Alpha Ford or even the other MSA based structure prediction AIs are all the same, trying to find some structure patterns hidden in MSA and try to build a 3D structure based on that, right? So I think the information, the amount of information in the MSA is somewhat limited. So if we just achieve that limit, then, then there's no way to make it better above that threshold. So I think we need to find another sources to get additional structure information to make it better. And, and already the ones we fail to predict a good structures is usually when we don't have any evolutionary information for that. So, so yeah, I think it just achieved the semi similar level of, I mean, performance because it utilized the evolution information and basically it tries almost maximum amount of structure information hidden in MSA. I oh, think so. That's helpful. I guess that and it's just it's just a thought that always worries me a bit that we're going to spend a lot of time playing mm -hmm. with different architectures. And in fact it may be that we're limited, as you say, by the 
by the data and the actual um you know the fundamental and we're extracting all the juice out of that particular orange yeah. that we possibly could i don't know but we'll see what happens mm-hmm. i guess in the uh, next casp or two anyway thanks yeah, a lot that's no. really great thank you i think so that's to... why we oh sorry i think that's why we got a better performance i mean we saw a better performance in cas 15 for the groups actually engineered msa a lot instead of engineered the architecture a lot <laughs> Yeah. There are two questions in the chat. Uh, Shai, Shai Tanya, do you want to, should I read it or you want to speak up? I, I, I can read it. I thought it was interesting. So basically, she has a question mm-hmm. about for a practical question for those in academia. So, what advice mm-hmm. do you have on iterating or model, modeling architectural ideas? Do you create in a small subset? Or mm-hmm. training your data set, do you quickly train? Of course, I guess you cannot wait five weeks for every try. Every <laughs> yeah, of then course. you will not be done for uh, CAS 20. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like smaller subsets or less training. What do you do? So, I usually do just sub use a subset of training with smaller architecture. So, so even though my finer architecture having like 36, I mean, four extra blocks, 36. The main three track block and 45 mm-hmm. month layer. But for the small experiment, I usually have just four extra block, like 12, 36 main blocks, and just pure refinement layer. So I make it the smaller architecture and also make a smaller training set. But if this that idea is really works better, then then it uh outperformed even for these smaller uh training setups. I mean the smaller experiment. So, so yes, for the academia who don't have enough GPU resources, I think just going smaller and having small toy, I mean, problem set up is the, the way to, to, to <clears throat> the ideas. And then there is a question from Sanjana Nai. You want to read it out? Uh, hi, uh, thanks for hi. the great talk. I just had a slightly technical question, not directly related to the contents of your presentation. Uh, so I wanted to ask if uh, Rosetta Fold 2 on GitHub right now, does it support unpaired MSAs? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so, so, I have to double check, but uh, yeah, I'm not. So the final, the inference script is made by Frank. So, so yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, so, but it's easy to add the unpaired MSA option. Right. So let me, let me double check. And if, if it's not there, then I, I will add it. Sure. Uh, so yeah, that's my, uh, so my focus is mainly on uh, mm-hmm. working with host pathogens. So mm-hmm. that's why I was trying to figure out if uh, modeling of cross species protein, protein complexes was something mm-hmm. that you guys were working on because currently alpha fold and I'm not sure about Rosetta fold, but at least alpha fold doesn't really do well in that respect. Yeah. So that's also true for the Rosetta fold because it mainly rely on some hidden patterns in MSA, and and it works better if you provide the paired MSA. So mm-hmm. for the the cross species PPI, there's a no good, I mean, general rule to pair the sequences because pairing the same species doesn't make sense, any sense for the cross species PPIs. So so I'm working on it. So. One of my students and one of my collaborators actually working on developing some AI which pairing the sequence to make a good complexes at the end. So, so, so I think we can get some 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 result by next few. I mean, next couple of years. So, so, so please stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. It's great to hear that somebody is working on the problem. <laughs> Thank okay. you. So I, think, I think we have time for a final question by, by Recep uh, Adiyaman. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's a great uh, thing and the community will benefit of that. Uh, and you are also working with Sergey and 
Uh, I wonder if you have any plan like a uh, collab for version of the repo to, uh, for example, more option for recycling and additional templates and without using the databasing or adding custom MSAs, something like that. Have you got any plan? Oh, I think Sergey is working on it. So yeah, I can push Sergey to make those options available or or or, yeah. or I can make those I mean options instead of him and commit it to the collaborate version. Yeah, but, yeah. Great, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestion though. Okay. So thanks, and I guess it's time to say good night too. So <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Thank for, you. thanks for staying up so late, and it was a really, really, really nice talk. I think it was very informative for all of us. So yeah. So and I'll, I'll put this up on the on the channel in the, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot, and uh, I hope to see you you all in the in a month. Something like that. See you for Martin Stein again. And yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks everyone.